Derek, when was when's the last time you've been to Disneyland? Like I said, I think I was like six. So I don't, you know, we went went for the day, stayed at my uncle's house. Uh, one thing I do remember that I could probably is when I finally went to Walt Disney World, because it wasn't until I went to Disneyland for it was my first ever Disney park. So I always likened it to, oh, we're going to like Six Flags. Uh, was like, oh my God, we're we're here. And it was like, you left an expressway and it was like, all of a sudden you're like at Disney, like it just felt weird. And then seeing Disney World was like, oh my God, this is like a whole other planet. That's when I fell in love with Disney. But I, I was so young. I just don't, don't remember. Being on the Disneyland monorail and seeing like Filene's basement is weird. Yeah. And like Taco <laughs> Bell. <laughs> Now I want it's some, just such now a I want local some vibe. I like it. I yeah, know. it's it, it. I don't know. It's it's kind of. I did. I did enjoy it. Oh. I have, and their fantasy land really does blow ours. Hey, and welcome to this week's episode of the DVC Show. I'm your host Paul Krieger. I'm joined as always by my amazing, lovely wife Amy. <laughs> We've got John Sakari, aka Big Fat Panda, in the house. Welcome home. Derek DeBoer, Senior Sales Associate for the DVC Resale Market. Hey, now. And <laughs> Jeff, <laughs> Chicken Tenders and Fries Haslam. What's up, everybody? <laughs> We're on, uh, I, I feel like I always, I, I, I kind of give a warning to this when it comes to this <laughs> week's show is that we're on show number three of the round of shows that we've filmed tonight. So we're Which all- is why we are, most of us wear the same clothes. We yeah. don't just wear multiple days in a row. Yeah. Except Derek for Cher over here. Every show. <laughs> That's how I know what show I'm on. I'm like, how many shirts do I have left before I have to do the next show with no shirt? So this is my last <laughs> yeah. so we're done. And, after and the day and the day of, he's always sending us questions about what are we going to film again? I need to know what shirts I should bring tonight. And, uh, <laughs> How many? I'm, out, I'm, out. I'm officially out. This is it. The last show. If you were wondering why he was wearing a plaid shirt the last show, it's because he thought we were going to do a show in Fort Wilderness, which we didn't end up doing. Um, so oh, I'm that's giving you all my behind the scenes drama. I it's, love it. It's it's great, and I think our viewers just love it. Um, you know, obviously we get amazing feedback from all of you every single day, and and. Um, so grateful for all of the positive comments you guys have given us about the direction of the show and uh, everything we've been doing here. So, can I can you. I get mushy for just a second with those comments? Yeah, what the people say it's true because we feel it also in the group. Mm -hmm. Like, what you see is what you get, and that's why I think it's real. But we feel the same way, so I, I love those comments because they see the truth. I like that. Yeah. yeah, we show up to these these filmings, and it's like. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of a breath of fresh air after a long day for a lot of us. It's, you know, spending time with your friends, which that, that's is, really what it is for me. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, love. just to echo that, like I, there's been times that I'd be dreading it, like a long day at work. I'm like, ah, oh, I don't know if I have the strength, but then we get here and it's just yeah. jumping back. Into it the just pool. falls, it falls oh, into place. Yeah. I feel the same way. Yeah. I'm tired Aww. today. I was like, oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe <laughs> they do without me. <laughs> I'm happy. So this week we are talking all things Disneyland versus Disney World because we know that there's a lot of people that have started following us because of the villas at Disneyland Hotel. And there's a lot more conversation about what's going on on the West Coast. So we kind of thought we'd unpack a little bit of what's different between the two different properties. Some of the things that um, you may need to look out for if you as a Disney Vacation Club member are thinking of going out to Disneyland for the first time, because I think there's some pointers and some uh, tricks to the trade that are important for going out there. But just comparing the two properties, because it is getting more popular and it Disney does seem like they're going to be investing a lot more money in the coming years into Disneyland. We know that there's rumors out there and plans out there already being submitted to the city of Anaheim for basically like a third gate uh, or basically an expansion of the, you know, the property out there. I'm adding more rides, more attractions. So Disneyland is growing and more of you are going to be visiting that. So let's kind of talk about the, uh, the comparisons between that and what most of you are familiar with over at Disney World. Before we get there, as always, please show some love for the sponsors of this show, the world of DVC. DVC Resale Market, where if you're looking to buy or sell a Disney Vacation Club contract, they can assist with that. 
Monera Financial, where if you're looking to finance that Disney Vacation Club resale contract purchase, they will be able to do so. And the DVC Rental Store, where you can try before you buy, rent some points, or rent out your own points for some cash. So... <laughs> you guys make this you guys make this more so enjoyable I mean, bunch. <laughs> i've seen i've seen that this section like the plug section of our video viewership actually go up over the past like, five weeks just because uh because you, you never know what you never know what to expect pouring water on each other how many people can you have on camera at once paul a lot more you know? yeah yeah i think yeah. So i feel like we could pull in some other people and do like our own version of hollywood squares tell me that wouldn't be amazing <laughs> oh my gosh and we have to hold up a x or a zero if they win yep. yeah <laughs> i like it is does anyone else listen or watch game show bloopers like in their mm -hmm. spare time oh my all god the time. religiously i am all addicted to that yeah hollywood squares bl bloopers are amazing family feud um the, the, the family guy. feuds are the best the, the guy that answers turkey for 12 answers. For everything. Yeah. Lucky. <coughs> the Snoop Dogg one <laughs> takes the cake as the best family feud. Snoop Dogg. Uh, yep. Look it up. Oh, yeah. Look that one up. Uh, anyway, don't navigate off of our YouTube Sorry. channel, please, for, uh, for, for bloopers. Go do that later after we're done talking to you about Disneyland and Disney World. But um, I don't. No, whose topic this was? Was, was this yours? It was my topic. It was yours. Well, yeah. tell us a little about it. So, uh, yeah. So my thought process was kind of what you were saying before. Disneyland is becoming a little bit more popular for DVC members, especially now that we have some added inventory at the resort for members to stay. And I thought it would be just a really <coughs> good idea to go through uh, some of the different aspects, uh, ex just to try to like it because a lot of people are just so Disney World focused. A lot of members are so Disney World focused. And there's this whole other world at Disneyland that that you're missing out on. And uh, just talking about, you know, what are the resort options? What's availability like for members? What are the discounts like for DVC members at, you know, at Disney World versus Disneyland? Because there are differences there. Uh, what kind of special offerings, special events are there for members um and then just just talking about the parks in general and and what the difference is you know disney world is so big and it's just this you know sprawling uh multi-acre resort with all these you know multiple parks and multiple resorts and and all these things to do and a majority of people that visit disney world you know outside of the dvc guests a majority are people that are kind of on their once in a lifetime trip you know, or traveling from far away or whatever. And that's why things at Disney World change kind of um, not that fast. You know, you'll have a fireworks show for several years at a time. Whereas Disneyland is more of a locals park. And so in order to keep the um, the locals coming, they there's always they're always changing things up. The night shows change a lot faster. And it's just there's there's a different intimate factor there. So just want to talk about those differences and maybe uh explore it a little bit yeah for sure um i think all of us on this on this uh show have been to disneyland at some point let's go around the room and start with the person that surprisingly has been to disneyland i think the least of all of us on this call is mr derek DeBoer. Hmm, that's me so when i heard about this show when we were talking about it in our little <laughs> group chat that we have. I said, I would find it amazing, but I need to treat this because the last time I went to Disneyland, I literally was, I was trying to think, I think five years old. So we, it was a day thing. We stayed at my uncle's house out there. We drove an hour to go to Disneyland. We left at the end of the night and drove back home. So that was it. So it's been a one and done for me. So my whole life has truly really been Walt Disney World. That's the thing. So I want to treat this, which I'm learning so much already, to be honest, just about Amy's analogy of you know this is why things take longer in florida than it does at disneyland is because it really is much i mean we love our you know locals down here in florida but i think it's a totally different vibe it sounds like out there in california where things change much quicker so i'm just going to treat this like a oh i didn't know that or can someone help me or what if i finally decide to go there so i'm i'm excited about this show note to self plan trip for this group to disneyland together <laughs> That would be a riot. That would be fun. We can't even know. get on a zoom boat. <laughs> we got one step at a time. We only talked about that a half hour ago. 
Uh, Panda, you've been to Disneyland. Uh, give us give us some of your background there. Uh, twice, only in the last six years. So I am a Disney World guy. I mean, that's been my place since I was a kid. I, I'm an adult and I was going to travel to Disneyland. I did not want to like it. I didn't. I wanted to love Disney World and be like, forget it. But there are some things there, you know, when we get into it, I'll tell you that their fantasy land, I, I really enjoyed it better than ours because it was more intimate. It had little details that we don't have anymore, like the Wicked Queen looking out from the window. I can't believe we don't have that anymore. It's there. Uh, the fact that Mr. Toad was there, I just felt like, and, and Snow White, the dark ride, I just felt like, oh my gosh, these things, I, I felt like I was in my Magic Kingdom here and these things just came back and it was just amazing. It was like I wished Mr. Toad could be back and there it was. So things like that, uh, I loved it. And I, that Grand Californian and the Disneyland Hotel, I've stayed at both. They were pretty fascinating. I loved it. Our local, uh, I will call him our local Disneyland expert of this group, um, Mr. Hey. Jeff Haslam. Um, I'm an expert at something, finally. <laughs> <laughs> Growing is, up so big. Yeah, this is your new title, finally. <laughs> <laughs> um, you are from kind of out west, and uh, this is this is kind of your hometown park. Yeah, definitely. I've definitely been to Disneyland more than I've been to Disney World. Um, you know, I lived in Utah basically all my life until eight months ago. And I, my parents started taking me when I was literally a fetus to use Derek's <laughs> in, our, in our group chat. Like I was probably in utero the first time I went <laughs> and went every year, every two years, my whole life growing up. So Disneyland is definitely has a special place for me. I feel like we lost wow. our family friending friendly rating. For <laughs> I don't this, think we ever had one to begin show. with, but so Jeff, I have to ask you, you're cause you're the opposite of me. When yeah. you went to Disney World, were you like not wanting to like it because Disneyland is your park and you liked it? Like, what did you feel with Disney World? Uh, you no, park? I wouldn't say that. I would say, I mean, Disneyland has a special place for what it is. It's Walt's Park. You know, that was the only one that he ever got to see and spent so much time. Not at. true. <laughs> not true. Walt walked the property here. So he was here. But he never saw any rides built. Okay, so let's fight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so <laughs> After we did it the <laughs> there's an intimacy and a nostalgia to Disneyland and mm -hmm. that's where I grew up. But yeah, Disney world is more, it's bigger. It's, there's a lot more to do, you know? So there, there's pros and cons for me to, to both, honestly. Yeah. yeah. So, same thing with me. I can't wait to go back to Disneyland. Our, I remember uh, walking down the main street and seeing their castle and being like, ah, but then you look to the right and there's a mountain next to their castle. It was the weirdest thing. Yep. It's familiar yet not. Yeah, Main Street feels so familiar yet different, you know. Yeah. And but it's so yeah, weird. Disneyland to me just feels so it, historic. It's it feels historic and and like you said, nostalgic and um, intimate. Uh, but and there's some things, you know. I know that it's it doesn't have as much to offer as Disney World, but you can walk like literally everywhere. You can walk from park to park to downtown Disney to your resort, and you know what I mean I love. I love yeah. the walkability over there. The navigation of it, it was was something that I think we fell in love with right away. But we had been dying to go for so long. And I vividly remember. So when they came out with, and it's coming back this year, which mm -hmm. I'm super excited about. Sadly, I don't think we'll make it out for. But when they announced Pixar Fest several years ago uh, for Disneyland, I was like, we have to go. Like, because I was like, there's going to be Wally stuff. And obviously he's above. <laughs> my head. Like, there he is. Um, I'm, I'm obsessed with Wally love everything Pixar, but we'd been dying to go to Disneyland. And so we like, we talked about it. We crunched some numbers and we like wrote it off. And then I remember the day where I was like, Nope, I'm going to make it happen. Like you only live once and we want to have some fun. And we needed a little, little getaway that summer. Mm. And I, I remember saying to myself, I'm going to surprise Amy with this. Now, if you've been playing the home game, you'll realize that I'm terrible <laughs> at surprises. Um, like legit, they don't last 24 hours. So I remember getting home from sure. work the night that I had booked this <laughs> Disneyland trip and Amy was like sitting on the bed, reading a book or something. And I just jump on the bed and I'm like, guess what, guess what, guess what? And it's like, 
yeah, I, I then told her that night that we were going to Disneyland, but um, <laughs> that was the start of our Disneyland adventures. And we've been three times now. Four. Four. I've lost track. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so, uh, you, so, so Paul, sorry for me asking. So on your very first trip there, you've obviously been to Walt Disney World before at, at that point, right? Mm-hmm. But you've never been to Disneyland. So where did you stay on your very first trip? That is a great question. So, so just thinking about even just resorts in general and availability for DVC members. So obviously Disney has a lot of options for DVC members. Uh, at the time, Disneyland only had Grand Cow and it's a very small, um, you had to pretty much own there to get in. Uh, but something that is really awesome about Disneyland is that even if you uh, don't have any points to use or you can't get in, there are a plethora of very affordable um, off property options. They're like good neighbor hotels. Yep. And it's not like Disney World where you really need to be in that bubble all the time uh, because you can walk from your good neighbor hotel and get right to Disneyland. Many of them have views of the parks, you know what I mean? And so you don't feel like you really have to be on property. And the other thing is, is that being on property, if you're not paying with points, is very expensive, right? The three hotels that are there range anywhere. I think we had looked that same trip into moving to what was then known as Paradise Pier. Now it's Pixar Hotel. And it was it was over 400 a night. So we didn't. So we ended up staying at the Anaheim Marriott at that time, which we had an amazing experience. We could see the Incredicoaster from our room. Uh, We walked to the parks and back every day. And and so that's always a really great option. And then I will tell you, there is one resort at Disneyland that is not a Disney World resort. We do own Grand Cal now, and we've been to both Grand Cal and Disneyland Villas. We've stayed at both, love them both. But there is one resort that I, if Paul was like, do you want to stay there? I would take yep. it over an on-property any- resort any day, and that is the Westin. It is incredible. And yeah. it is like half the price of a cash Disneyland hotel. We had an amazing view of DCA, a better view than we had at the Disneyland Villas, and a huge balcony. The room was gorgeous. It was brand new. There's an amazing restaurant there called Puesto, which is a very like upscale uh, Spanish Mexican. Just such a cool. Oh, and the rooftop bar is amazing. It basically ha- it feels like you're hanging over DCA. So there are some really really <laughs> awesome off-property options they are affordable uh, but with that said uh, we have stayed at grand cow we do enjoy that it is an amazing resort uh, if you can get in with your points because uh, it's very expensive cash wise and obviously the villas at disneyland hotel is brand new it's very pretty um, our only thing there is we do miss having a balcony and a majority of the the villas there don't have a balcony so Yep. That's my spiel. <laughs> well, and I'll just echo that, you know, Disney World, and this should really speak to you, Derek, and I'm not joking this time. I know I gave you a hard time, but you complain at Disney World a lot about the planning that goes into it. Oh, I just can't go. I have to go and get this 60 month or 60 day reservation and I have to get my lightning lanes and I have to do all this thing. Disneyland is such a much easier. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to be. I want to ride what I want and not. It's just so much less planning and so much less time intensive. If you're going, you can easily do a Disneyland trip in two or three days, you know, and it's just so easy to just kind of slide in and do a few things because it, it is, it's a locals park park yeah. at heart. And so, yes, there's still Genie Plus, but it works so much better there because you can use it at both parks and it's such an easy Mm -hmm. walk back and forth it's so much more affordable because you don't have to stay on disney property you can stay across the street at the stop and robs and (laughs) you're closer to disneyland than the disneyland hotel is some of those properties you know the tropicana Mm -hmm. is one of my favorites it's kind of a budget hotel but that's a place where you're not at the room very much unlike disney world where you might be here for a week so it's easy to just walk across it's so much easier on on your time and your budget did you guys notice, and I'm sure Jeff, you'll tell me this is true, the characters just walk around? Yeah. Show up. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. they don't get like, mobbed does, <laughs> like they do. But how is that? Come on. It's still crowded. How come it's different? Like 
all of a sudden, Alice is just walking next to him like, hi. And she's like, oh, hello. I and think, like, yeah, I think the distinction is, and, and this show is Disneyland versus Disney World, but it is going to be more Disneyland heavy because we talk about Disney World constantly you know, all the time. So majority of people listening they know they know disney world has a ton of dvc resorts they know what they are they know you know what i mean um but when it comes to like things like characters and genie plus it is a locals park and so a lot of the people there are locals are annual pass holders they're not buying genie plus i don't buy genie plus when i go to disney world i'm too cheap to buy it every time i go over there right and so it's easier for those of us visiting to use Genie Plus and, and get those lightning lanes. And the same thing with characters. Like they they're there all the time. The the locals, they see them. So they don't they don't get mobbed. Like I guess do they don't, yeah. At Disney I guess World. That's... When yeah, people on those once in a lifetime trips and want their kids to see the characters and it's different because we we went and what doctor it feels doctor, more organic. Captain it feels Hook, much more organic. Yeah, yeah. Captain Hook just came over to us and started like messing with us and like and there was like nobody around there was nobody around us uh, i have photos of it yeah see th that's just all stuff that i'm like truly like that makes me excited just knowing it because every time i go to the parks and i walk around and i look at these families obviously at walt disney world or epcot my wife and i went last friday you see some of the weights for some of these characters and it's just unfathomable i'm like this line has got to be at least like 30 minutes to meet snow white or this one to meet bell has got to be at mm -hmm. least 45 minutes so to hear that they could never do that at walt disney world like you could never have bell just walking around <laughs> epcot and because families would just literally mob her so that's yeah. that's a really cool thing to hear that's neat mm -hmm. I think, I think it happened what, a lot while I was there. I think what's so touching about the parks, I, I can, like, I remember growing up with Walt Disney World and I remember going to Disney World, but I will always, and maybe it's because I did it later in life, I'll always remember the feeling when we first walked into Disneyland. You could yeah, feel, you could feel right mm -hmm. away that you were now part of something special. And you can see it from the cast members that are there. You can see it from the characters that are walking around, as we've said. There's just a bit more respect for what this place it's, is. It starts with the lamp in Walt's apartment. I agree. I walked into Main Street, saw that lamp, and all of a sudden, everything just meant more. It's yeah, definitely a vibe. It's a very different vibe and a different energy, for sure. Yeah. Yep. Is it? Is it more because again, I haven't been, but is it because when you go to the Magic Kingdom down here, obviously you walk in Main Street. It's just, I feel like everybody's in a mad rush to just do this ride, do that ride, do this. Do do people take the time because they're more local to just kind of like stroll down Main Street? You know what I mean? I think, or just I think it depends. If like, if, if you're in the afternoon, there's definitely a more low key vibe. If you're there at Rope Drop or when the park opens, it's yeah. still a madhouse. And and it's interesting, too, because California Adventure and Disneyland are so close together that everybody has to line up in the same place going mm -hmm. both directions. So that esplanade in between the two parks at 7 a.m. is like the Hunger Games. <laughs> it is no joke. I'm surprised people don't die more often. <laughs> but And, and so, true. yeah, so those people that are there early in the morning – are obviously not your locals. They're the people that are there on vacation and they're they're mm -hmm. hitting the Rise of the Resistance or or Guardians of the Galaxy or whatever it may be. But I would say afternoon to evening is probably the most special time at Disneyland as the lights are coming on and mm -hmm. the crowds have kind of started to chill out a little bit. And yeah, it's and Derek, they're pirates of the Caribbean. It blows ours away. It really mm -hmm. does. It's longer. Really it's longer. Month. It has two drops. Like it's just it's, uh, the it's, restaurant that's in it. The almost, restaurant, yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> the restaurant oh, in the bayou. Is that the restaurant where you get the Monte Cristo? Right? No. I, uh, oh. I think they used to have one. Yeah. They they used used to have, have, blue yeah. Bayou. It's the Blue Bayou. Right. Yeah. yeah. But it is a longer ride to get to like where the pirates are. It takes a while and it yeah. builds up and there's much more elaborate scenes. Mm -hmm. I was like, what is going on? I couldn't believe how much better it was. So, Even there, it's a small world is better than Oh our. man. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take this a step further of, of, you know, all of us have been there except for Derek, um, you know, within the past few years. Is there any ride there that you would actually say is better at Walt Disney World? I thought I of one the other day. The Jungle Disney. Cruise. The Jungle Cruise is better here than at Disneyland, but I think that's the only one. Yeah. Yeah. Haunted Mansion, maybe. 
I feel like our no. haunted mansion has uh, it. Haunted mansion holiday. No. Oh, when you think yeah, about when they do the Halloween, I didn't, I didn't see how. Oh, oh man! Oh, oh, haunted mansion holiday. That's the other thing about Disneyland is they do such extensive layovers yeah. that you they couldn't pull off at Disney World. Even the even changing the music on Cosmic Rewind. That one year they made that Christmas yeah. song. You notice they didn't do it the next year because so many right. people complained about it's it. Terrible, right? <laughs> but Disneyland can do that, right? They can turn their entire haunted mansion into Nightmare Before Christmas, and it's so extensive and it's so cool. And then it's almost uh, like a completely different ride. It's a completely it's different ride, yeah. And Small it's World cool. Holiday, California. like I and we, Ghost we Galaxy saw, at Space Mountain, and yes, Star Wars, space, yeah, whatever, space, space, yeah. space Mountain, yeah. Thank yeah. You, yeah, monsters after oh, dark what, what, on uh, Guardians. Guardians, yeah. Hey, What's so, going on so with their I, Redway, Jeff? The their Redway? Redway people mover went from regular to a rocket ship, and is it still open now? I don't even know. No, the rocket ship thing broke the pillars, and they don't know how to fix it. Uh, I think it's gone <laughs> forever. That was before our time. I wrote it. Rocket, My dad rocket 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 I find the rocket I find rocket the food yeah. rocket rocket the food better at Disneyland. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Especially like quick service food. And that's another yes. thing. Um, in terms of Disney Vacation Club discounts, Disneyland gives out a lot more discounts on quick service. You can pretty much get a DVC discount on most any quick service at Disneyland, whereas at Disney World, it's only very few. It's very only limited. like a couple of resorts that only have quick service. You know what I mean? Like, or animation. like it doesn't even make sense. But um, so that's that's something it's that the, the discounts are like more prevalent. But I agree, Panda. I think the food at Disneyland, oh, especially even quick service. Uh, quick. I agree. I went to the Carnation place and got like a grilled cheese and a tomato soup. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. fantastic. Our our favorite. We've gone twice now um, and it has blown us away both times is it, it's now just called Jazz Kitchen. It used to be Ralph Brennan's Jazz mm -hmm. Kitchen, but uh, that is in the downtown Disneyland area. And, um, just an amazing place if you mm -hmm. like Creole food, um, and uh, those flavors. Yeah. And we walked over without a reservation yeah. and, and got in, you know what I mean? So like spur of the moment, like it was just easy to, yep. to do that. You know, you, there are some times where you have to make reservations at Disneyland ahead of time, but you know, there's times when you can just be a little more spontaneous and. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and I think I, that just resonates with, with how much a local park it is. You know, I remember when we were there most recently, it was around the, the Halloween season and you saw kind of the influx of people on Friday night and you'd see people in, in kind of their, their business casual, you know, they just got out of work and they're coming here for, you know, a snack or they want to ride monsters after dark because you know, that's the, that's the holiday overlay that they do on um, guardians of the galaxy mission breakout or what used to be their tower of terror. And, you know, just the locals take over that place because, um, you know, they, they absolutely love it. And, uh, that's why the whole annual pass deal was, was so big when annual passes came back and, uh, and such an ordeal over there because these people do like, that's, that's their Friday night. You know, this is like going to the mall on Friday night or, you know, going to the movies on Friday night. It's the locals of Anaheim. They go to Disneyland. Does well, there an oh, include parking? Does it include parking? Their yeah. annual pass? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think okay. certain tiers do. Um, yeah. I think it depends on what tier you have. I think you're right. Yeah. But one thing I was going to say too, we were talking about attractions and whether they're better here or there. Can we just take a minute and talk about Fantasmic at Disneyland? Mm -hmm. Because it puts ours to shame. And I, and I, I'm a huge Fantasmic fan. I love it here. But so for people that don't know, their Fantasmic is done on the Rivers of America in front of Tom Sawyer Island. It's right there in front of Pirates, in front of New Orleans Square. And so you sit on the ground and watch the show, but you're six feet away from it. You are right mm -hmm. in the middle of it. And yeah. they don't have the big backdrop that, that ours does. So they've come up with some unique ways to, to make theirs different. Like the, they have a big pirate battle with, captain jack sparrow and it's on a just this massive pirate ship that's yeah. as big right in front of you mm -hmm. and just a little tip if you can do it do a dining package for their phantasmic because you get really 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 up close and personal with it and if you do it at blue bayou you actually get a cushion for your butt so 
So they um, stopped the cushions. They stopped the butt cushions. They did stop okay. them. Yeah, I already got. Yeah. I already got one. We yeah, we had them um, the first time, and then the second time they didn't they didn't have them anymore. They didn't do it. Yeah. So and I think I think we hawked ours on eBay. We did hawk ours on eBay. <laughs> when we moved, <laughs> when we moved, we were like, "What are we gonna do with these butt cushions?" Huh? Um, but it is ew, a used face. butt Amazing. cushion. Yes, it is, and they used the real boat. They used the Mark Twain. Yeah. At the end, you know what I mean. So that's and it, so it's it's a lot bigger than the boat. But at, it, full disclosure, Boat's they don't have world. a dragon anymore. They don't have a dragon. No, it, it was, I heard it's so, coming back next. Some, it next has month. to. Something's no, I think coming it, back. This, this summer, Fantastic is relaunching. Yeah. I don't know if the dragon will be there. They rebuilt it or what? But they we'll have find to out. But you're right. It is more like you feel like yeah. you're in it. Like you're right there. Well, and because and you staying, technically are. <laughs> And staying on the topic of just like evening fireworks opportunities, um, they're ever changing. You know, there's every every three or four months, there's some sort of new evening fireworks show that they're doing. Uh, my personal favorite has been most recently Mickey's Mix Magic. Oh yes, <laughs> um, I just think that vibe was so cool on Main Street. And the other thing is, if you did go see like Fantasmic. Um, on the rivers of America, you could stand there and they put the water screens back up and then you can see fireworks there. So you don't actually have to run over to main street to see the fireworks. Obviously you'd want to do that to, to get that perspective, mm -hmm. but, um, they also project on small world. So you have multiple options to see from different types of places. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite things they do is the Mickey firework and they did it with the other show too, that we were yeah. Just at oh that was like in August of last year but yeah what show was that Disneyland Forever Disneyland Forever yeah, yeah. and the things yeah. they do on Main Street for that were so cool like the projections are amazing uh, during the Little Mermaid part they had all these like tentacles coming out from the buildings and so it's just really neat they do so now, many cool things can we just talk about how successful Cars Land looks at night how oh pretty that was the whole space is just uh, Derek you would. Go nuts. Cars I've seen videos one of those. Oh, it looks amazing. It looks amazing. But I feel like as much as I would love to have that come here to Walt Disney World, I still feel that the parks still need to have things that are only at this mm -hmm. park. It doesn't always yeah. have to be. Disneyland has this and so does Walt Disney World. So I think keep it out there. But yeah, it looks incredible. Incredible. That's, and then that's a great point too, because... I, I do hope that Disney listens to that and, and kind of gets that feedback from people because they've been in a habit more recently mm -hmm. of, um, in, look at Indiana Jones. We're supposed to get that. It's great. Let me tell you, it's great. Yeah. Right. They've been in a I habit just, more recently of like cloning these things, but it's just not, I think what any of us want. Like, honestly, we've been there four times now. I think we've walked through the Star Wars area, Galaxy's Edge area, once at Disneyland. Mm, we skip a lot of because I'm just like yeah. the same stuff. Why? I I why you can get the same thing? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I, like I, identical. That is, and that is my biggest complaint about. So, talk about Cars Land for just a second. I don't think there was an IP put into a park better mm -hmm. than what they did with Cars Land. Like it is beautiful, top to bottom. Conversely. I don't understand with as universe as big as Star Wars is, why they didn't do something different in each park. Like, I just don't understand why we didn't get mm -hmm. the thing that we got in Disney World and then like a Hoth or a Tatooine or whatever yeah. planet you want to yeah. go to. They could have still had the same attractions and it would have been fine. But I don't know. That's, that was yeah. something I never understood. That would have been a great idea. And then you you draw people to want to go to both places. Yeah, 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 definitely. On your list, Amy, you also have member special offerings. So that's been something that has historically always been in the favor of Disney World. So mm -hmm. we've got Moonlight Magics. We've got other small events that pop up. But I would say this is something that since the addition of the Disneyland Villas at Disneyland Hotel, um, they're getting a little better on. Starting to, yeah. So Moonlight Magic, there's still one what, one single event at yep. DCA one night. Uh, so definitely a big difference there. Disney World definitely gets the better end of uh, the stick on a lot of the member special events. They did do a Halloween event at Disneyland also uh, right around the time that they did the meet and treat at Disney World. I don't think they did any Valentine thing. Um, yep. They did a Valentine event at Disney World, but nothing at Disneyland. Uh, 
So, so yeah. So in that terms, Disney World does have a lot more options. Hopefully, though, as they continue to sell uh, the villas at Disneyland Hotel, we'll see more member special stuff come to Disneyland. But one thing to note is that the lounge for DVC members at Disneyland is better, in my opinion, Completely. than the one at Disney World. You've got this big space, tons and tons of seating. Uh, they've got not just the where, Coke- where is it? It Amy, is, where is it? It is in uh, Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland. Um, it's in Tomorrowland okay. in the um, Star Wars launch bay space, I believe it is. Um, like the second floor there. So you also can go outside and you can sit and look out there. And um, they have like they have like the free snacks and the Coke freestyle, but they also have some sort of someone posted on DVC fan not that long ago. Since we've been there, they put in some kind of I don't know. It was like a cappuccino machine or nope, that was there. Oh, it was there already? Yep. Oh, I didn't even yep. know. I don't drink coffee. So they have like more options too. And my favorite thing, there is a bathroom up there, which Epcot. That's a, that's a big win. Yeah. The Epcot DVC lounge does not have a bathroom. You have to walk a marathon down. Oh, yeah. Around, past the Winnie the Pooh with the the net. and <laughs> so. But yeah. yeah um... I love that that little detail. He's only out for an hour a day. But to Amy. <laughs> You have to pass Winnie the Pooh <laughs> with a net. Yeah, and they're the adding net, catching so, butterflies. And they're adding a second. I wouldn't call it a lounge. They're calling it kind of a welcome station. But they're adding that in the old uh, Blue Sky building um, that is over at DCA. So there's going to be kind of another area. Mm-hmm. I think that's more going to be like where you would go, and and Derek would try to sell you on on purchasing timeshare if he still worked for <laughs> Disney Direct. <laughs> Uh, but it's cool that they're adding these these kind of exclusive spaces, adding more events. Um, they've always had kind of a yoga, sunrise yoga event that they've done out there at DCA, I think, as well. So um, there there is a lot more that they've been adding in terms of these member events um, as that park grows. And now they have two Disney Vacation Club properties and sales aren't going well, so well. So they got to do something to, to, to sell points. Is, was, is it very hard looking. to get, I'm sorry, within seven months, is it really hard to get anything over there? Uh, yes. Yeah, so it is a challenge. Uh, Grand Cal in particular is very hard at seven months. We have done it. We've gotten it at seven months, but it is hard. Uh, the Villas at Disneyland Hotel is a mix. It just depends on the time of year. Uh, and I think <clears> they will start to see that change a little bit more as uh, more inventory opens up uh, and, you know, more members buy points and less is available for cash um, because you've got all these people that do that when they buy resale, um, any, you know, pretty much any resale minus the Disneyland Hotel, that they're not going to be able to use their points there. So that opens up a little bit more availability for those of us that can. So, you know, we, we don't really have a good grasp on what availability is going to okay normally look like there yet yeah and i will say because i've been i've been stalking the side a little bit because i have been jonesing for a disneyland trip and especially at halloween Mm -hmm. Uh, and i'm finding halloween especially has been harder than it was to book during the summer because halloween is huge at disneyland it is Um, yeah boogie boogie bash is there mickey's not so scary it's held at california adventure it's impossible to get into like yep we failed. Last year was terrible. We tried to get yeah. in last year and failed. So, so difficult because it's so popular. The villains are out. Oogie Boogie has a whole thing. They do a special Guardians mm-hmm. of the Galaxy layover, a special World of Color. Like it's it's a hard thing to do, but I'm just Yeah, but we have Jolly we have Jollywood Nights. Don't forget. Right. <laughs> I like Jollywood Nights. I enjoy I did enjoy it. I had a good time. Yeah. People bashed on that <laughs> event too much. Um, we did go to the last one, so they did have all those kinks worked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, no, I, I think there's so mu- so many special things to do out at Disneyland. And what I'm excited about with the new property that's there now is that it, there's just more opportunities for people to go. Um, so more opportunities to hopefully get in in the seven month window, um, and uh, and 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 more people can go explore that park. And part of me wonders if that's maybe half of the point of why they built it is, Mm -hmm. is, you know, to, to kind of inject people and excite people to get out there um, with the hopes that that would sell more points at the Disneyland hotel, but also with all of these future plans that they're, that they're thinking about doing out there, 
there's a lot of excitement that's around the California and the Anaheim area, and they've got a lot of support locally right now. That's always been a struggle with them, with the uh, with the local government and everything, to get a lot of these uh, things that they want to do passed. Because we actually, um, what five six years ago, we were supposed to already have had that second Disney Vacation Club property. It was mm-hmm. going to be a split property. Uh, in the downtown Disney yeah, area. Yeah, it was part of why they closed um, Earl Sandwich. And uh, She's still bitter I was, about that. I am still bitter. I'm glad that it's back, though. And it's coming back permanently. Yeah. So that's exciting. But even though there's one here, I just... It's such a great place. You can't have enough Earl of Sandwiches. No, you can't. You can't. Um, <laughs> and But they also closed... Uh, what's the other place that we also have here that's slipping my brain? Rainforest Cafe for... That was a win. That yeah. <laughs> nobody misses that. No. Nobody misses that. I just feel bad for him. That's all. But you know, speaking of, you're talking about for you know looking forward. I was just I pulled up the Disneyland Forward website because it's been in the news a lot, and we haven't really talked about it much. But Disney has committed two billion dollars for theme park and resort expansion out there. Like it's not this is a thing we're thinking about doing. The money mm-hmm. has been set aside now. Obviously plans can change but looking at their website and what they have thought of one of the things like paul was saying is not only an expansion of disneyland and california adventure towards the hotels like it almost looks like those hotels will soon be in the middle of these theme yeah. parks right that and would be cool also a smaller third gate across the street with what looks to be a pretty giant hotel so it'll be interesting to see what how Disneyland Hotel sells and if this is going to be a half and half split like they originally wanted to do to yeah. add some more inventory out there. I, it wouldn't surprise me. I, I, Any more, I can't see Disney like ever building a hotel without a component of DVC. You know, that was that was kind of what they were going to do with reflections out here at Disney World is, um, you know, kind of have a mixed use property that was half, yeah. half and half. So it's like it for them, it's like, why eat the whole? Why sink the whole cost into us when we could just pass it off to the members? So. Yeah. With that said, I know that purchasing the Villas at Disneyland Hotel has been kind of a turn off with people with like the transient tax and stuff like that, and that's that's always going to be a factor. But like when you think about everything that's coming to Disneyland in the future, I think that we're probably seeing one like the cheapest that we're going to see that. Oh yeah. That hotel is gonna. It's just going to start going up you know, as more comes to that resort. Well, and, and Derek, you can actually chime in on something tonight. Um, I actually had, uh, <laughs> I had someone pose this question to me earlier this week. They asked, they said, you know, I just went on my first Disneyland trip and really absolutely loved it and, and want points out here in some, some way. And they said, what do you think, you know, Disneyland hotel is going to be on the re- resale market? Should I buy now or should I wait thinking that it's going to come down like Riviera? Um, and my advice was, I'm not quite sure that ever in the history of DVC has waiting necessarily been the, the, the better option. Um, especially since right now we don't necessarily know what the value of Disneyland hotel is. So, you know, you can put an offer out there and see if they bite. Yeah. And, and it's like the, the Riviera too, where it's, you know, the people that buy it maybe don't necessarily know that when I go to sell it, that the people that buy it on the resale market can only use it at that Disneyland DVC resort, which honestly, and I have people all the time we do at the DVC resale market that when they buy points at the Grand Cal, when they buy points at the, you know, DVC, these, they're not merging those points, which is important with Mm -hmm. maybe if they already have points at Walt Disney World. They don't care if they're adding on and it's a separate use year. They don't care if they change the names, if it's a separate membership number, because those points for the resorts at Disneyland are so valuable because you truly have, maybe it's in the case of the Disneyland Resort, the new one, you got one place to be able to use your points. You're not going to mix those in with other points. So it's different when you're at Walt Disney World, when you say, okay, I'm going to buy Saratoga, but oh, look, I got 10 other places that if I can't get in there, that I could use my points for. So the people, especially over the years, watching the Grand Mm -hmm. California just kind of start at, you know, this where Disney was given discounts, the biggest discount I remember that I've ever seen in my whole entire life to get, nobody wants to buy this. What can we do? We can discount it where they're buying it so ridiculously cheap. But then what happened was, and it's almost like the beach club too, where it's like people that didn't necessarily own points there. 
maybe they got in at that seven month mark and they went, holy cow, this is where I want to stay. But it took me forever to be able to get in here. So I want to make sure that I buy some points at the Grand Cal because I don't, maybe don't want to go every year but maybe it's every other year, right? So at least I know that I can get in there with that home resort window, which I know is key because the Grand Cal is the smallest out of all of them. So any yeah. DVD. Right. Yep. And that's such a good point. It is so different owning a Disneyland, you know, property that the recent restrictions don't, don't really matter there. You're right. Cause we did the same thing. We bought our Grand Cal. I didn't care. We did. It was a you different. You called Derek in the middle of the night. <laughs> it wasn't that late. <laughs> <laughs> he also responded very fast um we we because it was a joint decision in the end um we we put it in a different use year right it didn't matter that it was a different use year it didn't matter that i asked derek to switch the names around so mine could be first for once uh you know it didn't <laughs> right, matter right we honey it was a joint venture honey <laughs> <laughs> My name is on it first now, but, but that, that is, it didn't matter because we only use those points at Grand Cal. So a Disneyland hotel, I don't think those restrictions will matter as much like Derek said. Yep. No, especially somebody like we talk about Disneyland being a locals park, but I consider the West coast to be the locals people, right? People like me that lived in Utah buying Disneyland tower DVC would have been a no brainer 10 years mm -hmm. ago because mm -hmm. for that same reason, that's an easy trip. Yeah. People How far is Utah it. from Anaheim? Uh, it's about 10 hours if you drive and an hour and a half to fly. It's not bad at all. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a so, fast hey, flight. So, so if I'm thinking of, which the show has been very enlightening and very helpful and make me very excited, not that I'm going right yet, but if I were to go, where would I fly into? So for folks that are kind of considering going out to Disneyland, because they watch the show, you guys told it, where do I, do I fly into LA? Do I fly into... There's Napa so, Valley. and there are a myriad of options for you. You know, mm -hmm. definitely yep. don't fly into Napa Valley. That's the wrong direction. But the <laughs> well, closest airport there for a different reason. But okay, go ahead. <laughs> the closest airports are the closest airport is John Wayne or Santa Ana S N A. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay. only like fifteen minutes from the parks. It's super yeah. close. And then you've also got, oh, that's crazy. You've also got sometimes that's a smaller regional airport, so direct flights are are problematic getting into mm -hmm. S N A. Yeah. LAX, you can get there from anywhere <laughs> on a direct flight. It's a huge airport. Mm -hmm. um, Long Beach is another option. LAX, an hour How? away from Disney? 45 minutes. Depends on the day. Yeah, it depends on traffic and time of day, but 45 minutes to an hour. Mm -hmm. um, Long Beach, about the same half hour to 45 minutes, depending on the day. You've also got Ontario as an option. Um there, yeah, there's a lot of airports. Why there. would anybody go to Canada, Jeff, to get to Canada? <laughs> <laughs> Wrong airport. Uh, and I would say if you're if you're like shopping, it's if, you shop, if you're like shopping prices for your flights, um, you know, keep in mind, you know, look on look on Uber or Lyft or whatever your your rideshare app is to see what the cost is going to be from that airport to it. Because, uh, you know, as Jeff said, uh, going to LAX is a 45 minute to an hour ride. And, um, you know, depending you are in California, so things are a lot more expensive in California than maybe you're used to. So that extra hundred, hundred and fifty dollars to fly into Santa Ana is worthwhile when it can, when you compare that to maybe that Uber or Lyft ride or, you know, rental car or however yeah. you're going to get around out there. That's, yeah, that's that, been our there, experience. There, there is no mirrors shuttle. There is no, what's the yeah. one with the trains? I can't remember. Remember <laughs> sunshine right. flyer. Sunshine flyer. Yeah. There, there it, it's Uber. Or rent a car. Yep. So okay. yeah, yeah. But we have done both Santa Ana and LAX multiple times, and I, I mean, it's been, I uh, we've yeah, both, we've not had any issues. Santa Ana is our preferred because it's small. It's an easy airport. You know, to us, it's like the difference between using Tampa and using MCO. Tampa's a lot calmer, uh, just like Santa Ana, as opposed to MCO is more like LAX. So. Um, and Jeff, Jeff, I'll ask you, um, kind of wrapping us up a little bit, I'll ask you this question because it is one of the most popular questions we get to people that are looking to go to Disneyland. Uh, how many days would you recommend for a Disneyland trip? Just going to ask I that. Think, uh, <laughs> uh, well, really quick on the airport thing. You guys talk about Santa Ana, LA. Try Long Beach. If you think Santa Ana is chill. Really? Long Beach, the baggage claims outside because there's no room for it inside. Like it's huh? eight, 10 terminals, I think, mm -hmm. most really really oh, wow. small so but um 
I like to tell people a three day park hopper is plenty at Disneyland. Mm-hmm. I, I get people all the time going, we're going to Disneyland. We're thinking like five, six day passes. I'm like, you're going to run out of things to do. Yeah. Like it, it's super small. It's super easy to navigate. It's super easy to get around a three day pass. You're not going to have to crush it from rope drop to fireworks every day. You know? Yeah. Um, if you want to take it even slower, man, I would say four days max, but honestly I would do three days and then either bounce up to universal or go out to Huntington beach or mix yeah. it up that way. We've done that. Basically we've, we've planned like one day for each park, which even, even when we do that, we, we typically park hop between the parks, but mentally we're saying like one day for each park. And then that third day is like that day where it's, what are all of the things we want to do again? Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. And I will tell you what, something else you said, hopping over to universal, which we really want to do that maybe next time we're out there uh i want to go to knott's berry farm it's like right down the street yes. what the chicken from yes. disneyland yeah and they've got a lot of roller coasters so if you're if you're going to stay longer you know you might not want to do disneyland all those days you might want to go try universal knott's berry farm um you know or like you said go out to the beach or uh there's all kinds of stuff oh and someday that giant rocket thing is going to be out there isn't it yes <laughs> I don't know what that has to do with anything, but I want to see it. Um, one of the one of the space shuttles, I don't remember which one, uh, is out there uh, in LA at the at the Science Center. And so, if you if you're familiar with Orlando and you've gone to um, the uh, the Space Coast and you've seen the shuttle that's out there, it's kind of, I guess, kind of in its parked position. So well, it's actually hanging from the building, but it's kind of sideways and hanging from the building. So what they're doing out in California is they're they're putting it back in a launch position. So they have rebuilt the boosters uh, for the space shuttle and then they are make they are putting the rocket back upright on the boosters and then they are building the museum around So this it will be the only fully rocket upright. that you can fully see in launch position from that close like in the whole wow. of, the, of the old space shuttle yeah. series. So that's cool. We're space well, just, nuts. So yeah. I love that though. You would and think it, Kennedy Space Center would have that. I know. You would think. Yeah. There theirs is pretty cool though, too. Like the Atlantis, yeah. Like if you've seen it. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I, I won't spoil it, but the mm-hmm. the unveiling of of it. Um, it's cool. I, my my jaw dropped when it happened. So well, and you talk about, you know, all the other things to do if you wanted to make a longer trip. You talked about Universal. Universal and, and Hollywood is completely different than the one mm-hmm. here. You know, it, that's an easy one day park, not even a full day, honestly, but that place is a movie studio first. So you, it's actually filming locations and sets and, and things like that with some rides sprinkled in. You've got six flags that, that are, that is up the road. Um, if you wanted to do a really cool trip, do half your time in Anaheim, half your time in San Diego. It's only a two hour drive to get to San Diego. It's like driving to Vero beach and you've got SeaWorld and Wild Animal Park. And um, <laughs> wow. Derek, for the word is Vero. I know, right? I'm like Pavlov's dog. I'm like, <laughs> tons of sporting events, you know, that are close by. Uh, one thing that is off the radar for most people is actually catching a filming in LA at the studio. There's tons of game shows you can go to. Amy and I, my Amy and I went and saw Dancing with the Stars taped live. Oh, wow really fun yeah. lots of things to do in california that are just not far from disneyland That's well cool. if we've missed anything that you love about disneyland versus walt disney world or if you are someone that says nope walt disney world is better we want to hear your thoughts uh, put those in the comments below this video uh, like and subscribe to our dvc fan youtube channel as always and join in the conversation where we get into some of these topics and more on the DVC fan Facebook group and uh, over on dvcfan.com. But uh, I think that's going to do it. Uh, We're all probably going to just get off this call and go book a Disneyland trip now. So um, we will see you all next Monday. Hi, everybody.